recording. Recording was the one Same. important thing that uh, that I have to do. <laughs> so uh, now I'm recording, and now I'm ready for you. May remember when I mentioned earlier I'm ready for you? I was almost ready there. I'm now ready for you, totally. Okay. Excellent. You start. Huh? I'm against in second. Uh, again? Yes, but I mean... I'm a second again? Uh, it's the coin. Oh, always me, always me. I don't. After I've seen your coin tricks, I don't believe your coin anymore. Anyway, <laughs> like uh, you know, the, the, the listeners don't know that about you, but you're a part-time magician doing doing yeah, card I'm... tricks and coin tricks, and you showed to me, to me of all people, you showed how you can predict what side the coin falls on. That that is that is really really bad because I remember when we started to debate, I was flipping the coin. Then you complained that you don't know if it's if it's honest and if I'm not faking it. And ever since you were flipping the coin, and then you show me that you're a, a, a freaking magician and you can predict where the coin falls to. First of all, I'm only an amateur magician, uh, not claiming to be professional yet. Secondly, I'm preparing for my retirement. And thirdly, I do I do flip the coin. And most often, I flip the coin virtually using Google's flip a coin, <laughs> if you type this in the Google search engine. And who knows if you can predict that one as well? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Anyway, but it's a good it's a good uh, good uh, intro. By the way, hello everyone. Yes, uh, it's a good transition to uh, our motion today because we're going to talk about coins. Yeah, and how they flip fifty percent of the time on one side or the other. Exactly, fifty percent in the in, in the in the in the state's coffers in the state's budget. Yes, because yes. our motion today. Go ahead. Yes, today our motion is tax the rich at 50% of their salaries. What that that deserves some explanation. You you came up with that motion. What uh, what is it that you mean? Do you mean like oh the first 50% are tax free and the other 50% are taxed or do you mean like oh whatever the salary is we take 50% of it or what what is it that you want to 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 discuss? Um I think the implied thing, good, good question, good point. The, I think the implied thing here is we're talking about probably the marginal tax rate. So the highest tranche should be at least 50%. So basically you pay whatever tax. And the reason why it's implicit is because we're talking about the rich. So I guess anyone who earns under a certain threshold pays a, a small amount of taxes, and the richer you are, the more you earn, the more you pay. Yeah, the basically. progressive tax system, basically. So the progressive tax system, yeah. exactly. And so, you, right? what you're so saying is, a, this should be capped, not lower than fifty percent. Correct. Okay. And the reason why why I brought this up is because I think this is discussed actually increasingly so because of uh, an increasing gap in income and in wealth around the world but including in specific in in a number of countries so within a country like france like germany possibly uh like the uk or the us there is a widening gap between those who who earn the most and those who and the masses who earn way less um and a number of you know other things that we can discuss as to why the, this could make sense uh to actually tax rich people or people who earn a lot of money even more all right cool are you ready to debate then? The flip of the coin made it so that you're for taxing and I'm against. Correct. So let me put my little timer and we'll start with my two minutes here. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Tax me. Tax me, I am privileged. And I think it's important to start this way because... Too often uh, you can have a discussion and it doesn't affect you personally. And I feel I'm not taxed enough, to be honest. Uh, I'm lucky to live in Switzerland. Uh, I chose to live in a specific area of Switzerland where the taxes are low because I have the choice and freedom of movement. But honestly, compared to the tax rate I could pay in other rich democracies, it's very, very comfortable. So I think it would be totally fair if the tax rate were, was increasing. I think it's morally good, but even if I were taxed at a higher rate or if rich people were taxed at a higher rate, there is still money left. 
Um, and this is why you have to be smart about the taxation that you have in a country that we talked about in the introduction about progressive rates. So basically, the more you earn, you still get more at the end of the day in your pocket than if you earned less, even if the tax rate is more than 50% on the extra dollars that you earn. And I think morally, I said, I'm morally, it's good. And the reason what I mean by that is I think I, I mean, I think I know I do want to live in a world in which we help each other out. And the more you have, the more you help. Uh, you may disagree or people may disagree with this. It's just different visions of the world we want to live in. Uh, what's really striking is in the U.S., I was catching this stat, is that the 400 wealthiest American uh, Americans pay less tax as a percentage than any other income group. Right? And this is very odd, right? Because you have all these loopholes that exist in the tax system in different countries. I'll get back on this in my in my second segment of three minutes. But the fundamental problem as to why we need to, to tax rich people even more is because there is not enough money at the state level. And the state is not just some random entity. It's everyone. It's us, right? And to fund education, to fund health, and in fact, the U.S. has a terrible health system. Uh, in France, it's pretty good. But overall, countries like Germany, maybe oh, maybe, maybe not Germany. Actually, maybe, maybe Germany is pretty good. But overall, countries like France, the U.K., or the U.S. are bankrupt. And the only reason we can be bankrupt is because we can borrow money on the markets, right? People will lend to the US or to France or to the UK because these countries pay back their debt. But someone needs to pay at the end of the day. And instead of being bankrupt, why not have a money, a system, sorry, why not have a system in which you have enough money to fund all this? So in conclusion of my first segment, yes, I think it, it makes totally sense to tax the rich at 50% or more of the salaries to fund all this. It's morally good. Uh, and there's still money left in your pocket at the end of the day. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. You touched on it a little, the question, what is rich? It's very, very easy to debate the tax for the rich and how much money they don't pay and how much money we could have at the state level if we just get our hands on it. So let me put that in perspective. In the US, and to be fair, we, we often talk about the US in this context, but actually we could extend that to Europe as well and probably other parts of the world. In the US, the 10%, the top 10% in the US make $90,000 a year. Really? Is this what you assume to be rich? I mean, those are people with a house and a car. Like uh, it's it's not that that you have the the uh, people with the yacht that you try to tax. It's if you if you talk about rich, you first have to debate what is it that you consider being rich. And it's a nice touch that you include yourself in that category and that you think you should pay more taxes. I'm all for it, but that's number one. I do think most people don't think of themselves as rich enough to be subject of that debate. Um, second thing. You assume that just because people don't pay taxes that then this money is not good for the majority of people. That's a thing to disagree over. Not everybody would agree. Uh, first off, it's not a given that the state is the best place to, uh, to spend the money wisely. Second, not everybody who's rich, even the billionaires, um, sometimes have very good track record on actually spending money in large sums, sometimes larger sums than any state could on good causes. I hate to bring him up, but he's like the canonical example. Look at Bill Gates. I think the guy did more for uh, to, uh, to fight malaria than anyone on this planet. And he certainly could have done it if he would take away his billions. So there are examples like this that kind of are um, countering that as well. I have more arguments to come, but I would be careful with touching the rich, just to say this, because also I believe there's a misunderstanding about our financial system that make us rush to that conclusion we need to take more of that money but i think there's a danger on damaging all our wealth if we do that too often next up sebastian let's hear his rebuttal i'll jump right into what you uh, you shared uh, you're totally right we need to define who is uh, rich and i was not referring maybe to the top 10 percent but specifically to the top one percent Uh, in the U.S., uh, although, again, we should not restrict this debate to just the U.S., the top 1% is uh, income above $400,000 U.S. dollars. Right? The current top rate is slightly less than 40% right? on, the, on those earning more than $400,000. Um, 
Now, 1% of Americans, that's about a million people. That's still a million people, 1.3 million people exactly reached that top bracket. Now, I was preparing for this debate and I was uh, I had, had no idea. Uh, did you know that in the times of Eisenhower, uh, President Eisenhower, what was the highest top income tax bracket? It was 91%. 91%. Uh, and it seems there's recent research, we had no idea and recommendation to actually go back to a 90% top marginal uh, tax rate, which means, again, it doesn't mean that if you make $450,000, you're going to pay $405,000 in income taxes. It means on the top uh, above the $450,000, you're going to pay 90%, which still means you'll have money in, the, in, in your pocket. So definition of the rich, I agree. At the top 1% is one measure of that. And there's still millions of people uh, in the, on the planet. Um, now, I also mentioned the aspect of loopholes. It's not effective if you have many loopholes, right? So very high marginal tax rate is not effective if it's riddled with loopholes. So you need to close these loopholes. Um, research apparently is showing that if you do have a very, very high marginal tax rate, and I'm not suggesting 90%, but this is suggested by some researchers, it would decrease income and wealth inequality. It bring in more money to the government, obviously, and increase everyone's well-being. Um, and this touches on the second aspect that you've mentioned, which is um, not paying taxes or more taxes does not mean that uh, the money is not spent or not properly spent. You gave the examples of billionaires, and you also mentioned the state is not always the best spender. And I agree with you. It is true. However, billionaires or private interests will not focus at scale on things like education for the entire country. They will not focus on health for the entire country, things like Medicare or whatever exists in the US uh, or NHS in the UK or defense aspect or building roads. No billionaire has the ability pretty much anywhere in the world to actually finance an entire country. Right? S some billionaires in Europe or the US may have the funds necessary to be able to overhaul a tiny country, but not the country, countries like China or the US or like France or Germany. And this needs to be funded somehow. And unfortunately, as I said before, states do not have the money. It may be surprising to most people, but I'll give you one example. I know it's numbers, so it's not a great argument. And I know France uh, more than any other country. The state receives in taxes, various taxes, 300 billion euros a year. It spends 450 billion a year. It has to borrow 150 billion every year to fund infrastructure, etc. Yeah, I don't like it. I think it's it's passing on the debt to further generations. So we need to fix the issue. And it's not about spending less. You need the roads. You need a health system. But we can increase the taxes on the rich. It will bring in money. So yeah, I think it is something that we want to do, taxing the rich at 50% of the salaries or even more, and the rich being the top 1%. <laughs> Next up, Dirk. The top 1% just serves as an arbitrary line because then you can say most of us are not really impacted by this. It's just a minority of the super rich people. Now, let me bring you a few, let's say, arguments that may, may be good food for thought. Number one, the top 1% to just stick with that term. Hey, they are so rich, they don't need to stay in the country they are taxed in. So if I'm part of the top 1% and I'm doing uh, making a rational decision to go where I can keep most of my wealth, maybe because I believe I'm the better decision maker as far as spending my wealth goes, well, then I will move to a country that taxes me lower. And that is exactly one of the key risk factors because that means wealth is moving out of the country. That is resources that no one has uh, access to anymore. That's not spent in the country. That's uh, moved out of the country and many Maybe you have the adverse effect of what you're aiming for. Yes, then income inequality will be lower as well. But I do think this will be at the cost, at the cost of having less money in the system. And here's what I mentioned earlier. I said there is a fundamental misunderstanding how our finance systems work. Our finance systems, in order to generate wealth for everyone, and by the way, 
yes, the gap widens, but even the the poor people are much, much richer than they used to be decades ago. So the whole system generates wealth and it's more and more wealth. It's uh, distributed unevenly, I give you that, but there's more money in the system than ever before. And if you would take out those big buckets, if we say we take the money away from all the billionaires and we spread it evenly across the population, everybody gets 30 bucks more in their pocket and we don't have the billionaires anymore. The result would be that everyone has less. So it's about shrinking and growing the cake and it's not about shrinking and growing the sizes of the cake, uh, the pieces of the cake. And I think this is a core misunderstanding. If you take away the wealth of fast-spending billionaires, of big corporations, there, there are plenty of places you could look for larger amounts of money. And you would give it in the hands of the state to distribute it. What you do is you're basically damaging markets and capitalism at its core. Now, ideologically ideologically you could say yeah that's perfect i don't want to have capitalism ruling the world but the fact of the matter is that's the number one system that understands or that works in distributing wealth and demand and we don't have a better system yet all the other attempts failed miserably and generated uh, poverty for everyone so i would say it's that dangerous to tax the rich and wealthy at too high a rate and we can argue about the right percentage and maybe the case can be made for 50 percent i don't know but i do think the sentiment alone is dangerous because it's playing to envy it's playing to the feeling oh i don't have what i deserve why are they rich where this is basically a natural outcome of the system we live in that right now generates more wealth more food more health across the globe than any system in human history before final statements sebastian goes first well we've gathered a lot it's going to be tough to do this <laughs> summary in one minute uh, we don't have to define the top 1%, but we can define thresholds, let's say, for Western democracies, things like, okay, you, I tax at 50% across above half a million uh, euros a year, and maybe at 75% for anything above 1 million euros. That's the concrete suggestion. Uh, say they don't have to stay in the country. I actually don't believe that. I think most people would stay because they're attached to their families and to their country where they live in for language and cultural reasons and many other reasons. So I think the majority would actually stay. We can debate about that. Um, the, the problem is countries, as I said, are fin financially bankrupt. And inequality has increased despite, despite what you said, that wealth is increasing. The wealth is increasing as a total, yes, but inequality is rising too. And people are not living anymore with no TVs, no cars in their homes like 50 or 60 years ago, right? They want to have a higher standard of living, everyone across the wealth spectrum. So yeah, their wealth is increasing, but the inequality is even bigger, um, but we're not talking about taking away the, the money that is accumulated by billionaires, right? I'm not talking about wealth tax, but income tax. So anything you earn above a certain threshold is taxed a little bit more. Uh, so I think overall, it is a fairer system which would allow to pay for what we need to pay for. And it's not paid for today. It's actually debt. It's our children, for those who have them, uh, which who will pay for this debt. So I think that's unfair also. <laughs> Derek. You're right. There are things that need to be paid for that are not paid for yet. Uh, I don't think that will go away if you take more money from the rich. Um, basically, what that would mean is changing prices, changing priorities. And hey, the easiest way to pay for the things we need to pay for is to pay a little bit less on the military side. That's my personal opinion, though. There's plenty of money. If you Even if you take, let's take 10% of the military budgets of all the countries and pay uh, for schools instead. How much better would that be an investment? I I don't care. I do I do think there is there's enough money actually to do what's right. There's not enough money to do everything governments want to do. I agree. Maybe that's not a bad thing either. Maybe that includes people with money in the system and society and forces them to stand up for their values and try to be a force for good as well, which is something we we seem to keep forgetting. People are people, even if they are billionaires. And not every billionaire is greedy by design. Some of them just uh, um, have been on the right side of the world, had the right ideas, are selling something that is in high demand. 
but they use their money to keep people employed, to do what's right, to sometimes make the world a better place because they also want to leave a legacy that's good. Anyway, overall, no, I don't think that increasing taxes is the right way to solve for the problems we have. Having said that, now that we've finished with the debate, if you pay less taxes, you can you can buy more photo cameras. <laughs> yeah, um, I I do. By the way, I really do believe that um, it's it's a downward spiral, uh, a, a, a down downward spiral. Um, yes. So trying to take more taxes so we have more money because what people forget is that there's a reason why we have that, that, that meant much money in the system in the first place. And the reason we have that much money is because all the incentives are aligned in, as such that people try to make more money and generate more value. And the less you have incentivized this behavior, the less wealth is in the overall system mm, in the end. I, I, don't, I don't think so because if we talk about, let's say, salaries, and let's be very concrete with numbers, Salaries over a million euros a year. Right? We're talking essentially about sports people, celebrities. And honestly, I don't think they would say, hey, you know what? You know, I'm, you know, whatever basketball player, football player. You know what? I'm not going to play at Manchester United or, you know, uh, whatever Dortmund or whatever, you know, football club. Just because ah, I don't want to get taxed. I'm, I'm, I will stop my career. I will go back and, you know, work at, you know, in a supermarket instead no, or a desk job. That's not what I, I said. Think, I don't think they need an incentive. I don't think they need the incentive or entrepreneurs even. I think, it, and, it, and by the way, it's only for a few years. Yeah, that but they uh, do this, I'm right? not. They would be taxed. I'm not talking about the individuals. No? I'm talking about the larger system. So we have a market. We right. have a we have capitalism. We have a system that generates money. And if you you're not talking about the 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 individual soccer players, although we can have an argument over whether or not they are worth the money. Um, we, I'm talking about. The overall system where you have incentives aligned in a certain way and right now the incentives point towards generating more wealth because you can. And the less... But I don't think, I'm trying to think which system are you talking about because I'm not talking about corporate tax. I'm talking about income tax, personal, yes. individual. But the, you know, if you if you make more than a million a month, you're investing that money. A year. You're buying... Or uh, a year. You, you're buying. You're buying stocks. You're you're maybe having your own business. So it uh, it it becomes it's a slippery true. slope because then then how do you, you define the loopholes that you wanna wanna keep closed? You wanna keep taxing those people. Um, so I, I would, yeah, it's it, it's a fair point. But I would close all loopholes and because they would still spend the money. That but they the have super left rich don't get a salary at all. I mean, Larry Page famously gets one dollar a month, isn't it? That um, what he gets as a salary, or was and it Eric fair, Schmidt? But, I forgot. But I, uh, uh, yeah, that's fair. There, there's a discussion about wealth tax, but we focus on income, right? So we talk about the the actual majority of the people who have a job, and not about the owners, which I think is another debate. And I wonder if we actually talked about it at some point. Um, but it's true. This is an, another loophole. Like if if you don't, if you if you can live off your dividends, then it defeats the purpose, but again, this is. I think there's a, a connected debate, but another one about income. My point being is the income that you take, that's not sitting. You're not you're not uh, putting that in in your pillows and sleep on it. You're putting it in a bank account. You're buying stuff with it. You buy a fancy camera or a TV set or anything like it, and um, that generates taxes and it generates further incentives for the system to generate additional goods, additional services and whatnot. So taking the money off the market, uh, um, if you will, by taking it into into the governmental system and then spending it less efficiently, I'm not convinced that this really solves for the larger problem we set well, out to that, solve. That, yeah, th this is why you have left wing and right wing you know, sides. Because this is essentially a, what you said at the root of, of capitalism. Yes. Uh, and whether you want to regulate it or not. So this is where I would disagree because we have a well-functioning state system in Switzerland, for instance. And I think in Germany it's pretty good too. Yes, I, but I, 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 I have confidence in the German system to actually give more money to the state. Uh, in fact, I feel they're not even spending enough. Right? This is a criticism the government is getting in Germany and not taking advantage of the very low uh, debt uh, interest rate, in fact, the negative interest rates to actually invest in infrastructure, right? And it seems that S-Bahn in Germany, the train system is you know, in, in decaying mode 
and there should be an overhaul and an improvement of the system before you know you have a recession or before you know the money gets more expensive to borrow. So I think I think you know for, for governments like Switzerland, like Germany, to a lesser extent France and the UK, I I do trust that system or that government to actually spend it wisely. With 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 caveat with caveat the caveat that you rightfully mentioned the defense the military for instance right it is the third biggest uh, in France because I know the the, the state budget better there. Do you know that the first uh, expense for the state is education, paying teachers and schools. The second, the interests of the debt, just paying the interest of the debt before anything else, before health, before the military, before anything else, is just paying the interest because of all the debt that was accumulated. The third expense, the military, the defense. Indeed, if you don't have an army, or, you, or we discussed this uh, previously, if you have a joint European army, you can probably reduce expenses on that on that I- aspect. I have a question for you, and that may be worth separate debate. But uh, Ryan, uh, uh, hypothetically, hypothetically, imagine we could all just we could all just go deeply into debt and use that money to solve the climate catastrophe. Should we do it? Because you make a case for, oh, they are spending more money than they make income, the uh, governments are bankrupt, they are in debt, they have to repay debt. But uh, I mean, the counter-argument to this is basically, hey, we are investing money here in the future that will pay its dividends in the future. State bankruptcies so, may be one potential risk of this, but not now and not, uh, not soon. And maybe it's worth investing now in the in the wealth and the, the health and everything that we have to do for our people. That's so, a very good question. Yeah, very, very excellent question, in fact. And in fact, I am exaggerating when I use the word bankrupt. Not that they're not bankrupt. It's just that a state is not a company. Yeah. And it's exactly for the reasons you point out. It's actually a good thing. There's good debt and bad debt. Good debt is, for instance, maybe improving the climate of the planet because otherwise we're, we're all dead, potentially. I don't know. Or maybe something much more concrete for any uh, German listeners, right? If it's about improving the train network because you have trains which are on time and more reliable, then you increase trade, right? You increase increase the movement of goods and services and people. So this is an infrastructure investment. So that makes sense to invest and have debt. An example of a bad debt, which may not please people uh, who listen to us, increasing the salaries of teachers makes no difference to their productivity. In fact, research shows that it's not about the motivation of teachers is mainly not about money, right? They don't become teachers to earn a massive amount of money, right? They do this because they love teaching others and a new, a new generation of, of students. But this is not productive, right? If you want, I'd love to be, able, to be able to increase the salaries of, let's say, French teachers by a thousand euros a month. But there's a million teachers in France. So a thousand is a billion every month. Is it productive? Is it investing in the future? Maybe, maybe in some partial way. But this is why debt by itself is not a problem. Uh, it depends where you spend it. So that's why it's an excellent question that you have here. Uh, and of course, this will vary country by country if you trust your government to spend the money well or not. Right? In Switzerland and Germany, I think there's a general consensus that we feel that our government are spending wisely and we're not running into debt to crazy amounts for the wrong reasons. And in other countries, you know, the government may be corrupt. And you may not have that feeling. So I think it, it, it does vary country by country. All right. That's it for our debate today. We Hot had, topic. We had a beautiful one today. I enjoy debating with you as always, Sebastian. Thank you very much. Thank you to you and thank you to our listeners who are patiently and kindly uh, listeners listening to us from around the globe. And if you're on our teams, uh, At Google, thank you to you. Special thank you to you because we've heard <laughs> recently that you are listening to us. So we're watching you. No, just kidding. We don't even know exactly. Well, we can we can drop secret hints to things in the like like uh, Easter eggs or such. Easter eggs, yes, yes. <laughs> and and give bonuses if they if they catch. Oh, the beautiful. Maybe that's a future debate. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks Sebastian. Thanks again. Bye. Bye bye.